Hello, I'm Deborah Jones, and this is your video companion to the Technically Speaking column from Stitches Magazine. In this session, we're going to talk about embroidering on plush fabrics. And to do this technique, I borrowed an idea from the golf industry in order to achieve the very best results on plush. Here's how it works. The golf head cover you see here has been embroidered with a fill base right on top of the plush so that the lettering can stand out and be nice and clean and readable. So borrowing that technique, I embroidered this golf head cover with the shape of a golf green in a contrasting color rather than the matching color like this manufacturer did just to add something to the design. Notice that I applied this technique when I embroidered this bear. And instead of using a full density, I backed off on the density, making it very light. And some of the fur actually comes through, but it lays down enough of the fur so that the lettering can be very plainly readable. This one has the shape of a heart. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. So this shape goes very nicely with this bear. And this one has the heart as well. This one has a shape of a little lily pad. Notice I like to use a matching color fill because I'm using a very light density. And in that instance, we want to match the color of the plush so that it's not so noticeable. It just becomes sort of an embossed appearance. And on this golf head cover, in the contrasting color, I used more density to create the contrasting fill. Density is, simply put, a measurement of the distance between the stitches. So, in the case of this base fill heart, I have used a density of 12 points. That is a very light density, and it means that there are 12 points between the needle penetrations or the rows of the fill. So in this case, this is going to make the very light density fill that you saw on the plush animals. Now, if I were to change this to a more conventional density for a fill stitch, such as a three or a four, and click apply, then it becomes a very solid appearing shape. And this is what we might use to do a contrasting fill, but to do the embossed look that you saw on the plush animals, I'm going to go with a setting more like a 12 that gives a very light coverage. Then I can simply add my lettering on top and stitch it onto the plush object. Now let's look at the procedure for hooping these plush animals and marking plush in general. Of course, on these animals, the back unzips and you can remove the stuffing pod. And on some of the newer animals, you can also remove the pod in the head so that they lie perfectly flat on non-tubular machines. So you can pop the tummy out. But before you do that, you do want to mark the piece with the pod still in place so that you can get the accurate placement that you're looking for. So let's mark this bear by looking at the center point where this seam is and where we want the center of the design on the body. I like to use this blue painter's tape because it's not so tacky that it will pull up the pile and remove it when you remove the tape. So I like to position it in the middle of the, the, the embroidery area, like we see here. And then I like to mark it with the center point directly down from that neck seam with a big crosshair so that that will let me position it correctly in the hoop. 
Now I also find if you're going to use something other than the blue painter's tape, such as a Target sticker, you do want to remove some of the tackiness by putting it on your clothing and lifting it off several times so that you won't pull that plush pile away from the plush fabric when you remove it. So this applies to any plush fabric you might be embroidering. And be sure and test that in an inconspicuous place before you apply the whole long piece. Now here I have one of the animals hooped and we don't have to put the stabilizer in the hoop with it necessarily because even though this is a knit fabric and plush fabrics are generally knitted fabrics but if you use a nice heavyweight tearaway stabilizer beneath the animal you can just slide it under as you place the hoop in the machine and that will usually give the proper support especially if you're just putting the light density fill and a name and not a highly detailed design. Notice that my crosshair is aligned with the tick marks on my hoop and that gives me great reference points so I know when I place it in the machine it's going to be in a proper location and that the embroidery is going to be straight.